Okay. Hey, everybody. I'm uh, Will Ald, and uh, I work for Intel. Um, this uh, work here was done mostly by Shantao, who's a member of our team, uh, and I'm presenting for him. Um, the idea here is that uh, we would uh, add the capability of uh, doing an HVM DOM0, so a hardware-based DOM0, hardware uh, VM-based DOM0. So uh, what I want to cover in this is a little bit of history, you know, why we are where we are, um, why we are interested in doing a hardware-based uh, virtual uh, machine for DOM0, uh, some of the technologies and, and what we would like, uh, you know, help with and that kind of thing. This is kind of the standard, um, well, a standard rep, uh, representation of the the uh, Linux, or Linux uh, Zen hypervisor, where you've got the hardware at the bottom and the hypervisor and the, the domains up above, where the, um, the DOM0 here, the special domain, is at the beginning, it's a uh, para-virtualized domain, and uh, it has the kind of the back-end drivers here that, that connect with the other domains and services them. Then up in the, uh, the yellow part, that's sort of the, uh, this isn't entirely uh, the right thing, but that's sort of a, uh, a ring, zero, or ring three kind of area where the, the management and control <coughs> software is. Um, the other types of, the rest of these are all kind of DOMU, the user domains. And they come in a number of varieties. You know, you've got the, the para-virtualized as well as the HVM, the hardware-based. And, uh, you know, they can be multi-threaded, I mean, multi-core, the SMP, or, or a regular single core. Can't look up there, it's <laughs> too high. Um, anyway, so a little history here. We've had, um, you know, trying to have Zen and, and the Linux uh, OS work together. We've had a lot of problems there. Uh, a lot of pushback every time we uh, try to get things into the kernel um, you know, to support Zen. And largely the, the kernel community feels like this is just kind of an added tax on them. So uh, because of that, they're, they're not that interested. And uh, so that that's what generates the pushback. They see it as extra maintenance on their side, and uh, they don't really see the need for adding extra features to, uh, uh, you know, things like the the Zen RAS and, and that sort of thing, which would be important for Zen, but you know, really a, a no op for the Linux uh, community. Okay, so uh, why is DOM0 a PV? Well, <laughs> um, originally all the DOMs were uh, PV, so, so that's, that's clearly the, the reason. But uh, a big part of why that's the case is that uh, the CPU architecture just didn't uh, have what it, what it took to do a natural virtualized environment, you know, something that's straightforward. Um, and uh, because of that, um, the Zen project uh, looked at doing something quite different than what's done in other places like uh, the IBM work, where it was all uh, para, para virtualized. Then, uh, even after uh, the VTX came out in about 2006, it was still um, not performant. So, a lot of the memory uh, um, for well, you had the, uh, like the shadow page tables and stuff. That all took up a lot of, um, of your uh, performance. And because of that, it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of uh, impetus to, to move forward and, and convert over. Um, so uh, in response to those kinds of situations, um, the, uh, the DOM0 was uh, para-virtualized and it remained para-virtualized. Um, 
But uh, this carries with it some limitations. You know, this is a recurring theme, you know, the dependence on the kernel and getting things into the kernel. Um, having uh, issues with uh, being able to get special features in and uh, a inability to handle uh, unmodified OSs. So if you don't have the source code to an OS, you really didn't have a, a, an ability to make it part of the DOM zero. Um, and uh, you, weren't there, you aren't able to leverage the, uh, the performance improvements that you get from hardware. Um, so, some of the uh, performance uh, situations are like the uh, system call in 64-bit uh, OSs um, on x86 where you had to kind of bounce through the uh, Zen kernel uh, to get uh, to your uh, kernel space in the uh, domain. That sort of thing um, you know, just makes it pretty slow, and you couldn't take advantage of super pages, um, and, you know, there's a number of uh, other uh, kind of components here that, that are just not available. So uh, as uh, the uh, processor architects, you know, came on with improved hardware, this is um, both uh, uh, ourselves and as well as AMD, you know, we uh, really improve the hardware capabilities. Um, you know, this is both in the area of the CPU <coughs> that we had originally, uh, as well as in the memory and I.O. and the, uh, also the interrupt space. So, um, you know, filled the holes <coughs> originally with VTX. And then uh, later, you know, we came in and, and had faster paths for like the control registers, the APIC uh, connection. We added the memory um, virtualization with EPT and, and uh, things around that. And then the I.O. with the pass-through and SRIOV. Uh, and then also the interrupt uh, handling improvements. So all of those things, um, really helped out quite a bit if you were using them. If you're using uh, PV, then you, you didn't really see a lot of that. So <clears throat> for the goal here for um, the DOM zero in, in uh, HVM, we really want to remove some of those limitations and be able to leverage these uh, uh, BT uh, performance and flexibility things. And in terms of flexibility here, I'm really talking about uh, using other OSs for the, the DOM Zero, um, things that we don't have to modify or can't modify. Um, now, there's a uh, couple options. One option I think was talked about at, at this conference last year, um, the PVH. And the idea there is you put the DOM Zero into a hardware container. Um, like you like you would an HVM, but you leave everything else, the, the main core of the interface, as uh, para-virtualized. <clears throat> and uh, so you, you get some enhancements from things like EPT, um, but, but you uh, continue to have the, the issue around having a, uh, uh, an OS that you can modify. Um, then there's uh, the full HVM. Uh, type of uh, thing, and that's the one that, that we opt for. Uh, you have to change some of the interfaces a, a bit, um, but you get uh, all the performance that you get with a regular HVM that's used for DOMU. So, <clears throat> with this uh, uh, modified DOMU, um, here we can uh, run all the, the uh, management control software, uh, Kimu and, and the uh, uh, Vert.io up in Ring 3. Um, and then we uh, can install the drivers, the backend driver and, of course, the native drivers into the OS as, as uh, you would without modifying it. And uh, 
then just work through the Zen layer uh, to communicate between um, the various uh, domains so that DOM0 can still support um, the other domains in their I.O. Uh, needs. Okay, uh, so some of the benefits, you, you uh, can use any OS, you don't have to um, have a specific OS with source available. Um, you uh, don't have the issue around the 64-bit uh, system calls. Um, and you remove the uh, issues around dealing with the like the Linux community and getting things into their their kernel, um, and then there you are able to add in some some use cases. And uh, actually, this this bottom one is I think uh, pretty interesting. It's it's actually not a change in any technology. It's more of a user experience kind of thing, where you can install Zen almost like it's a Type Two hypervisor, but it, it remains a type one and, and stuff. It just has a, a more of a user feel as if it were um, type two in that, you know, it's more, you, you just log into your system, you install it, maybe reboot and you're done. And uh, it's uh, quite different. Um, <clears throat> so uh, how do we make this uh, HVM work? Um, we use the, the pretty much the same infrastructure that we're using for DOMU today with the HVM. Uh, it's all the same for the, the CPU virtualization. The memory virtualization uses the EPT and, and gets the advantage of super pages. Um, in terms of the I.O., you've got VTD to do the pass-through. and. Uh, by doing that, you eliminate a lot of the VM exits that you would get, you know, trying to talk to the hardware. Um, and then uh, the interrupt uh, virtualization, this is an area that's a little different. The IO APIC is uh, uh, controlled by the DOM0, and then uh, DOM0 gets a, a local virtualized APIC, and uh, the hypervisor owns the, the local APIC, the physical lo local APIC. Now, um, to support uh, things like Windows, we need to use uh, boot sequence for uh, EFI. And uh, I'm not going to go through the details here. I don't uh, fully understand them all myself, so, but they're there um, if you want to uh, glance at it a little bit. In the case of uh, Linux and the HVM, uh, it's really the same sequence that we use today. So to uh, support multiple uh, domains, or actually what I'm uh, talking about here is multiple OSs as DOM0, um, you know, we need to have Kimu uh, there and ready to go. We need to have the, the PV drivers uh, supported. And, you know, in the case of Linux, we've got, you know, these all um, uh, in place and, and working. Uh, in the case of Windows, it's not all there yet. You know, we still need the, the user land tools, libraries, uh, ported over and, and working. And also, uh, Kimu needs to be uh, completed. This is the, the Zen Kimu. Uh, portion. And for the back end driver, we're using this uh, Vert IO. Um, so we would like um, help or to work with people on uh, the, the user land tools uh, to provide, um, you know, those things for other OSs, Windows here being the primary one, but uh, something like Mac OS or something would, would also be interesting. Um, 
and um, we need to ensure that we've got the communication between the, the front end drivers and, and the back end drivers that would live in the VOSs that are being added, and then uh, porting the Zen, Zen key mode to, to Windows. So uh, the takeaways here um, were this uh, enables us to use unmodified OSs, so it, it opens up the space there quite a bit, particularly for Windows, uh, but a Mac OS as well. Um, it's an addition to, to the Zen project. It doesn't uh, remove any of the current capabilities um, or change that, so that remains as, as it is. And it resolves some of the limitations that, that exist currently. Uh, these are performance and, and not being able to deal with uh, unmodified OSs. And then it adds some usage models that we talked about. Um, you know, things like uh, using Windows as DOM0, uh, creating a trusted execution environment, or the kind of the type 2 user <coughs> experience that you might get while uh, remaining with the type one. Um, and that's, that's it. So how do you handle things like ECPI power management where it then relies on a PD.0 in order Guys, we're going to have to, because it's recorded, um, if you don't use the mic, it's not going to be recorded. So how do you handle things like uh, ACPI power management where Zen relies on a PV DOM zero to interpret the ACPI uh, information and pass it down to Zen? Um, so actually I don't have an answer for that. I don't know the answer. Um, we could uh, do something similar or you might be able to, to just have you know, the uh, DOM zero OS control that. Um, today uh, it's kind of passed through but um, with DOM0, we're assigning a lot of the devices to, or with HVM, we're assigning a lot of the devices to DOM0. Um, most of those are I.O., right? But you could do this with other devices, you know, like the power control and, and that sort of thing. Um, but I, I don't think, well, in fact, yeah, we don't have a Windows version working, and so, you know, we, we don't have a, a solution there. Uh, Has there been any discussion of this approach on Zendevel uh, or any patches uh, posted or anything like actually, that? Actually, I don't know. Do you know, uh, uh, Hightown? Has this been discussed on uh, the mailing list? So, so sorry, what was the question? Has, uh, the question is, uh, has it been discussed on the mailing list, the HVM DOM0? Oh, I don't know. Okay, sorry. yeah, I'm sorry. Has anybody seen anything? I don't think so, right, so far? No. Yeah, so I, I actually probably the right thing is to maybe start discussing that on the mailing list. Yeah, and, I, and, I, uh, I, yeah. Can you go back to the, the graphical overview thing? I just wanted to take a look at that for a bit. I may have questions later. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> In the window row before, uh, you listed Virtio as backend, but at the same time, uh, I seem to recall that you had ported uh, like Sandbox, Runtable, these kind of things to, to Windows. So at that point, why not have PV, normal PV backends? Um, so, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm not sure I understand the enough details for this, but um, we're, we're using Virtio as a communication channel. Um, and then the, the back-end drivers just sit down in, you know, their plug-in uh, drivers, right? Is that, that doesn't, does that address your, your question? Uh, not really. Uh, so the question was about uh, why specifically Virtio instead of uh, the normal PD backends. Well, the backends are there. They're just in, running in, in So uh, they're in addition. Zero. So the, the Virtio runs running free and backends running in zero. Is that what I'm saying? Yeah, it's kind of a split uh, thing here. That makes uh, have you done any performance testing uh, 
on this model with actually we for this we were uh, for this talk right we were trying to gather the performance data and we just didn't have time so any any leading indicators you know uh, you I haven't seen them okay yeah. anybody else Doesn't that mean uh, creating guest operating system at another kind of dome zero? Could could you repeat that? Can you make multiple domain zero? Oh, um, maybe. I think there's a control issue, um, but um, that's really the problem. It's it has nothing to do with the HVM versus uh, PV. That's just um, who. Would How we can know that? Hmm? How we can know that if there is multiple operating system, multiple DOM zeros or not? Um, you would have to, you know, the, the DOM zeros would have to be able to talk to each other and, and you know, th that's a different project. <laughs> um, yeah. That's this application or something. Yeah. There's one that is one DOM zero. That's not necessarily the same as the big one through the domain. But for this application, we can't. It doesn't have to be a, a disaggregated domain doesn't have to be PV already, right? So okay, so that's already there. That's totally independent. Okay. Anybody else questions? So when are patches going to be available? Um. <laughs> um, so I, I don't know the answer to that either. Um, are you planning on publishing? Yes. Um, so we are planning on that, and um, we we will put on the mailing list something about it that says something about you know uh, availability or or when we would put some patches out because um, I think that that is a big hole. Yeah, I guess it might actually be a good start to you know post the slides in the presentation and just mm -hmm. get this going before the patches come, yeah. and I just use that to maybe bootstrap. It yeah. seems there's a lot of interest, you know, so let's just do a raise of hand, you know, who thinks this is a cool and good idea? Uh, huh. Quite a few, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to ask the opposite question. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who would be interested in seeing what it actually looks like in practice? Okay, who would, <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. I, I, obviously, I'm not a developer anymore, so I'm, I need to phrase my questions more carefully in future. <laughs> more questions? We have a little bit more time, I think. Um, so you, you just started to ask the opposite question. Is there anybody that thinks this is a bad idea? <coughs> really, it depends. There's not enough information here. It's not, not enough. Okay. Well, there Except was a hand that went up in the back. But, you know, yeah. yeah. I, I guess that depends on your view for, viewpoint, right? For client and those kind of use cases, it's actually probably very interesting. From a client perspective, Any more questions? Uh, no? Ah, one more. How long have you been working on this? Um, I, I think it's been about six months. 
but uh, I, I'm not actually the person working on it, so uh, I don't. The, um, we probably have uh, three, four people on this, you know, but it's it's not full time certainly. Uh, this is part of the uh, Shanghai team that we have. Actually, Hai Tao in the back's here, part of that team. Um, so, oh, actually, I see Jack as well. So, cool. Yeah. Uh, possible one more question on that. All right. In that case, there's no, no more questions. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for the talk. Thank you. Thank you.